like to talk a little bit about musical form and especially uh, melodic units called motifs in the first act of La Traviata and to make um, and to insinuate that it holds true for the whole opera. Now, we have seen Bohème and Carmen, and in those operas, I have stressed that there are musical motifs. That is, a musical, usually melodic, idea that represents um, a character. In the case of Mimi, you'll remember, Mimi has her distinct motif. The, um, the Bohemians have their distinct music that represents them, almost clownish in effect, as they dance and dream their way through their young lives in Paris. In uh, Carmen, you have similar, you, if you go back 25 years, you have similar motifs. You remember that the beginning of Carmen, there were two, there were two major motifs, the, the uh, procession of the Toreadors, and then uh, the Escamillo's Aria, yet another illustration of bravery. And then you had Carmen's fate, Theme. Remember, and it appears periodically throughout, fragmented sometimes, but periodically throughout the entire opera, as if Carmen is being hunted uh, by this fate represented by the motif. So, these are motifs in the Wagnerian sense. And I don't mean that to degrade Puccini or to, to degrade Bizet. It was uh, it was musical genius to create these motifs and attach them to images, to themes, but especially to characters or an aspect of character. Right? And it's fun for us as listeners. Now, in Verdi, we find something else. We find Verdi creating musical ideas to represent emotional states more than anything else. We, we don't have a theme that means the camellia. Uh, we don't have a theme that means the country or the city. What we have is uh, our musical ideas. This is, no, this is pre vopter which represent uh, stylistic elements which give a musical environment and provide us with individual uh, images we can attach to character without saying, oh, that means that, and that means that. Uh, this, the genius of Verdi in creating a character musically is very different from the Wagnerian motif. These are intense musical ideas that attach themselves uh, to, to, and illustrate a scene or a character within, in a certain way. Almost, as only Dickinson says, in a certain slant of light, a certain slant of melody or musical light hits them, and we know them. And it begins right here in the prelude, which is a musical portrait of, of the various aspects of Violetta. Then we enter a brilliant ensemble. And what I want you to do is think of uh, the music in this in most of this scene, whatever the chorus is singing or on stage or dancing, and in act three, as a kind of musical machine. And this musical machine represents the frantic seeking of the demimond. Let's live life. And Violetta is the very image of this. She says, I want it. I want it all. I want to live, to, to, to experience every pleasure drink every drop of champagne, smoke every cigar, win at every game. That's what I want. And why? Well, like, like Mimi, she feels death knocking on her door. Right? So this first act is a, really a lovely uh, uh, procession of musical numbers. First, there, are, there is a series. There is a chorus number and then a brindisi, which is a toast. A lot of Italian operas have a toast in them, which is very famous. Then back to the party. And then there is a lovely duet in which Alfredo breaks through this shield that um, Violetta has about her heart. And then this goes 
through and the chorus and Alfredo exit and there is this lovely intense scene and aria. I don't know if I'll be able to go into completely into detail about how this very complicated form but it was a scene that Verdi perfected in this opera but he would very soon bypass it for more through composed dramatic logic in operas like uh, Aida, uh, Don Carlo, and uh, even later, uh, of course, the great uh, Falstaff and the uh, mega great Botello. So this is a little introduction. I'll talk to you a little bit more about the musical forms we have here. Thanks.